the very much anticipated uh, interim report by advocate Tembeka Ngobaitobi has revealed that three top medical aid schemes racially discriminated against black medical practitioners. Earlier, GEMS failed in its bid to stop the release of a report into claims of racism by medical aid schemes. Our reporter, Malungelo Boy, has been listening in and he joins me now for a recap on the story. Good to have you with us, right. uh, Malungelo. Perhaps let's go back to the beginning for those who are getting sure. this at the tail end of it what was at the crux of this report which gems had gone to the high court to make sure that it doesn't see the light of day but as we can see sure. they lost that bid in fact they lost in that in their bid this morning because the, 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 the high court in Pretoria made their ruling saying that um, they, the basis of their of their application were not urgent and they had enough time really to or to interdict the court way before they could, uh, way before this uh, report could be released. And few hours after that court ruling, we're seeing the Section uh, 59 investigation uh, releasing that report, which uh, many people, especially in the healthcare sector, especially private practitioners, have been waiting for. It is damning. It's a bombshell, Tammy. In fact, this is one of the things uh, Advocate Ngai Tobi is saying, that there is overwhelming racial discrimination by Discovery, GEMS, and MedShield. So some, we know, Tammy, that some of the black health practitioner, uh, practitioners have long been saying that they are being bullied and racially profiled by some of the country's medical aid. That's why we think the, the, the medical, that's why the medical uh, aid schemes, in, in fact, initiated this report. So let's talk about some of the key issues, really, that came out uh, of this report quickly. So now we know, Tammy, this in, in this report says that a black general practitioners are 1.5 times more likely to be identified as fraud waste and in fraud, uh, waste abuse cases than their non-black counterparts. That's, that, that's essentially key uh, because it already shows that, you know, if you're black, you know that uh, you're more likely to be, um, you, to be flagged uh, and, and, and as one includes, of those. And this includes Indians, as it exactly. includes colors and, as well, that they're more likely to be committers of fraud exactly. than those who are categorized as white. A exactly. Racist. And then it, 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 it gets better then, Tammy. Here, when they break it down for us in terms of medical aid schemes, we, we told that um, Discovery was 35% more likely to identify black providers as having committed fraud, waste, and abuse. GEMS was 80% and Med Scheme was 330% more likely to identify black providers as guilty of fraud, waste, and abuse. We've also then heard from this um, report the, the impact um, these actions by some of, b b by the medical aid schemes have on, uh, on, on medical pr practitioners. Remember, these are private medical practitioners who depend on the money uh, that they receive from some of, or, 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 of, of, of their clients. We've heard, we know that some of them, in fact, this, this is the story that I've been following for a while, Tammy. We know that some of the um, healthcare practitioners their, their practices have shut down because they're no longer making money. Some of them, unfortunately, have actually even taken their own lives. And, and you'll remember in 2019, there were hearings uh, along these lines investigating this very matter. I mean, on Sundays when this sure. interim report was actually supposed to be released, so Advocate Ngoi Tobi was literally on standby yeah. for this uh, particular moment. But also, I think what's important to, to note here is what Advocate Ngoi Tobi said, that he's not in a position to find anybody guilty. No, exactly. What he's doing now is merely presenting results of an investigation, results findings of how the, um, the, the, the Discovery and, and Med Scheme, uh, GEMS and, and other uh, medical aid scheme providers have been treating black medical practitioners. That's right. In fact, it was also interesting uh, he, listening to me when they're saying that they were, their aim really was not to investigate intentional racism also. It was to look into whether 
are the systematic um, issues here. We now know that there are systematic uh, issues, but also what they were what they were also looking into, Tammy, is the pro the process when these medical aids interact then with um, w with these medical uh, practitioners. How do they inter interact with them if they are uh, accusing of of of, of of committing fraud, of waste or abuse. How is that? Now we've heard that in some of some of these medical aids actually don't actually even give um, you know medical medical practitioners a, a hearing so that they can be able to dispute so some of the allegations guilty, that, that have been made against them. So they're them. literally guilty before any sort of investigation right. actually takes place. Let's take a look at what some of what Advocate Nguaitobi had to say. Discovery, GEMS, and MED scheme provided to the panel. And as analyzed by Dr. Kimi, who was the expert employed by the panel, we have found that there are substantial differences in fraud, waste, and abuse outcomes between Black and non-Black practitioners over a substantial period of time, January 2012 to June 2019. What do we mean by that? One. Over this period, across all disciplines, and what I mean by disciplines, I mean medical disciplines, and the aforementioned three schemes, Discovery, GEMS, and Med Scheme, and their administrators, black practitioners were 1.4 times more likely to be classified as having committed fraud, wastage, and abuse than those identified as non-black. Two, the probability that this distribution occurred by chance. In other words, it was a mere accident. In other words, that there is no correlation between the racial status and the fraud, wastage, and abuse uh, outcomes, which was one of the defenses raised by the schemes, is for all practical purposes zero. So what, to repeat this, we find that there is zero probability that the discrimination in outcomes occurred by accident. Now, for a reaction on this, I'm now joined by Dr. Do uh, Donald Gumete, who is the chairperson at the National Health Care Professionals Association, and uh, he'll be joining in this conversation. A very good afternoon to you, Doctor. Your reactions, the word is out. Is it what you expected to be as far as the results of these findings? Remember, we are the original uh, people who actually made these allegations. And um, when we made them, uh, the medical aids, all of them, they bluntly uh, uh, put a, a, a blanket on it to say, no, 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 I think this guy, Kumede, is people that are mad. We, we don't uh, uh, profile people. There's no racism. There's absolutely nothing. And if you go back to your archives, you will see that what I'm saying is true. I even came to the stations, if you remember, uh, the newsroom, the inner studios before the COVID, and uh, articulated these issues thoroughly. That uh, I've gone through with my team uh, throughout the country investigating these issues. And the same conclusion was reached by us before we came, could make any allegations. The third thing before we move forward is that a government medical aid called GEMS went to court, woke us up on a Sunday to go to court to try and block a report that speaks about racism to black professionals. That's a sad, actually, day or moment of this month in, in, in the history of our lives. And, and, and I, I feel so agreed uh, to, 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 uh, that is them actually who ran to court to try and block the report, the interim report. And, and why do you think that they went to such ends uh, to try and make sure that this report does not see the light of day? It's because it's, it's easy. You see, they're still continuing with their conduct up to today, this guy, these guys. They still are, are subjecting our healthcare professionals to the... What are they doing? So it, it, it is very terrible. It's a for selfish needs. Let me just show you something uh, quickly. They actually published this blacklist report. Think about it in the social media or in the in the internet to say 
Dr. Gomede, I'm giving an example, is a fraud star. You know, just because maybe I refuse to pay them back the money, then I'm classified as a fraud star. Where is my reputation there? Was it considered? So the reputation was more important and uh, uh, trying also to make still make more money in the last or dying uh, kick of the dying horse uh, at the expense of the healthcare professionals, which is very bad, to be honest with you. If you could give us a, a very practical example of how a scenario would play out involving a black Indian or colored doctors uh, as far as interaction with patients and then interaction then with the medical aid schemes. If you could just contemplate um, that for a moment, Dr. Gumete, and when we return, if you could just play that out for us as to what would be the process that would then unfold as opposed to how the process would unfold perhaps for a white medical practitioner. We are in conversation at the moment with Dr. Donald Gumete and you will remember that he actually did make submissions at the 2019 hearings as well. The interim report that was uh, conducted has now been released. We did see Advocate um, Gaitobi briefing the media on that report. What are the implications of this report, not only on black medical practitioners, but also on the medical aid schemes? We continue interrogating this when we return. Uh, Malungelo Boy, thank you so much uh, for that update a bit earlier on.